My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2 and this review will have spoilers. Um, but um, yeah, have you ever eaten crow before? Because I'm about to. Wow, this show is really damn great. Like, I liked the first season enough. I thought it felt childish, but I did start to like it more by the end of it, and yeah, this season just took it to a whole other level. And it kind of makes me want to rewatch the first season, and I think I like it more now. And, and just keep in mind, just in case the comments are very negative on last week's video of season 1, keep in mind this video is getting recorded March 30th. So, none of your comments mean anything to me. None of your comments are influencing my viewpoint of this show. I'm genuinely starting to love it, like, a lot. You know, like, um, I, you just spend so much time with these characters, and I just came to realize how much I really come to care for them, and I'm emotionally invested. I still love the world building, and I love that... Saturday morning cartoon flavor well it's episodic but also serialized and just pacing wise it works really well like each episode's 22 minutes and there's just so much going on and like the characters are just the best part Aang he's likable he's got lots of personality and you just feel like he's this child with lots of power. And we see him grow and go through lessons of life in order to mature and reach his full potential, just like the rest of us do. And I just thought the character was a lot more engaging here. And the character beat of him having to let go of Katira and him refusing to is a really powerful moment and it makes you think like if you could stop war but you had to give up everyone you love in life like it's so easy to say that you would do the right thing but would you and yeah I, I really come to care for this character and Katara is a strong character and she's badass, she stands her ground incredibly well. And I also love how she's Aang's emotional support. The relationship between the two of them I find to be very pure. And you can tell they both feel the same way without saying it explicitly. And just my favorite moment of this entire season is when Aang's facing off against the guys who took Appa and he goes into the Avatar state and everybody's running away scared of him and Katara just stands still and just holds onto his arm and calms him down and then hugs him. It, it's a very beautiful moment. And then we've got Sokka who's just highly entertaining He's got a hilarious presence to him, and there was just so many moments where he, he did crack me up, like that um, episode in the desert, same episode actually, and he finds the cactus and he starts hallucinating and just being all wacky. I, I just think he's, he always lightens the mood up. But then we also got this new character of Toph, and... I think she is such a fantastic addition. She's a very powerful Earthbender, but the fact that she's also blind makes for a well-balanced character. You know, so she's not overpowered and she's not too weak. She's the perfect level and I love how she's just someone who's been independent for so long that she's trying to learn how to function as part of a group. And the four of these people and their friendships, it's just, I, I like, I, I love these characters and just all their chemistry with each other. The different personalities among the many of them and just 
really great stuff. And then you've got Zuko, who in the first season, I thought, started to feel a little one note with his desperate chase to get the Avatar. And I do think they flesh him out very well here. We see his inner conflict highlighted between who he thinks he's meant to be and who he actually is. And as we learn his backstory, there's some real emotional weight. And I love how at the end of Zuko alone, he tries to do the right thing, but nobody cares and everybody still hates him because he's Fire Nation. It's just like, can you ever escape that? And at the end of this season, when he betrays his uncle, you know, you feel the weight of it. And you, you know, I, I was very disappointed. I'm like, oh, I was hoping for you to do better, but I guess not. That said, I am concerned about his character in season three. I hope it's just not more of the same. I hope they, I, 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 I hope they do some more exciting, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm hoping it's not rinse and repeat for season three. Uh, speaking of his uncle, I think his story of wanting to start over and enjoy life more is just wonderful. He's very wise and he just gets along well with everyone and he's just a delightful presence. Uh, you've got Appa, who feels much more like a character. Like when he's missing, you actually feel the weight of it and you're like, wow, I've come to even care for this giant flying bison. Uh, Long Fang is a great villain, lots of menace behind him, and the brainwashing thing that he does is, you know, adds some nice tension. But the fact that he ends up bowing to Azula just reminds you of how menacing and intimidating of a villain she is really well written and whenever she's on screen you know you feel worried for the characters. Uh, Suki is a great character who I've come to really like. It was nice to see Jet again. The Earth King was great. Like just I I, I just like everyone. Like I, I'm I, I don't I just this season really did it for me and I love the note this season ends on where the heroes lose. It kind of reminds me of Empire Strikes Back, like Aang leaves his training to help his friends and the bad guys end up winning and Aang just barely gets out alive. Like, I don't know, some similarities there, but really well done. And I do like the continued storyline of Aang learning to control the Avatar state. It's some great storytelling. And I love the one episode where they're just tired and they can't sleep and they keep getting under attack. It just made them feel very human. And they just, like, everyone just feels like a real character with motivations and conflict and goals. And, yeah, um, this show's also really funny. Uh, there's an episode called Happy Avatar Day, I believe, where they almost killed the characters by frying them in oil. And then at the end, they get given unfried dough as a reminder of them not being fried in oil. I love it when I think it's Suka freaks out, being like, I'm completely calm. I think the animation looks really good, and the action is just really great. Like, the final fight of the season is tension-filled. I love the drill episode. I love the episode where... Katawa and Aang take down the serpent and it just kind of shows you where the characters are at emotionally and with each other. So there's, you know, greater purpose to it. Uh, my only real issues is that the one episode focusing on only Appa just feels kind of unneeded. I wasn't a big fan of it and it does feel rushed every now and again. But look, I... I kind of want to go back and re-watch season 1 because I feel like I'd enjoy it more and who knows. Maybe when I'm done watching this show and Legend of Korra, I might go back to the beginning because I really love this season. A lot. And I'm going to go ahead and give Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2 an 8.5 out of 10. And if I'm being honest, that could go up to a 9. 
Like, I really loved this season, and I hope season three is great. I've heard bad things about the finale, so, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, I'm totally into this show now. And, yeah, I, I think if I re-reviewed season one, it would be much more positive now. But, I don't know, it takes you a while to get into shows and to get used to the characters. But, anyways, what are your thoughts on Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon. And Gavin...